Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me once again. You're always most welcome. Well, some of you may recall, following the channel, that about a year ago, December, just before Christmas, uh, 2021, we did a review of the Hobby Boss A10 Thunderbolt, but it was the two-seater version, the NAW version, which actually never saw, um, never saw use beyond experimentation and training purposes. Um, I think only two or three were actually made. Now, um, the standard A10, the single seater, the kit wasn't really available from Hobby Boss. They dropped production of it. Um, but I'm glad to say here now, October 2022, that they have resumed and they have updated and reboxed their kit, making it the A10C. Now, as I understand it, the, the kit we're going to see, it's actually basically an extra sprue or two added to the, the A10A uh, to update it with new weapons and etc. Because the main updates I think were some advanced avionics, um, I think the, uh, they had one of these um, helmet system, operator weapon systems, um, glass, full glass instrumentation in the uh, cockpit and also the addition of the uh, sniper pods and the uh, ALQ pods and things like that. And they got rid of the pave penny uh, laser designator system on the side of the nose, which always looked a bit weird, didn't it? Very ungainly looking thing, um, like a pylon that they had sticking down. Got rid of all that, cleaned it up a bit, makes it look a bit more modern. Yeah, so they brought it out, uh, and I understand I've not built the kit before myself, but I'm told it's a very nice kit, you know, that it's based on. So it should be really, really good. Now, a bit of history on the aircraft, most of you know it. So basically it flew, first flew in 1972 and saw service from about 79-80 onwards. Uh, obviously it saw lots of, uh, of uh, combat. First Gulf War in 91 and the second in 2003 plus lots of other things it was involved in like conflict in Yugoslavia, the Kosovo War, um, used in um, North Africa against Libya I think in 2011-2012. So it's seen a lot of combat and, of course, Afghanistan later. Uh, I mean, this is a, probably one of the world's uh, best aircraft for doing what it says on the tin, really. Ground attack, comes in low. It's not a particularly fast aeroplane. Uh, it's powered by these twin General Electric turbine jet, jet engines, none afterburner. Um, but it's not the hugest speed. It's about 450, 460 miles per hour, I think it is. Not much faster than a Mosquito, but it doesn't need to be because it's not an air superiority aircraft. It is there to deliver munitions to ground targets. Close air support for troops on the ground. And of course, um, as I said in my previous video, uh, very popular with troops on the ground, a great saviour to them. Uh, there have been one or two unfortunate incidents involving one or two of these aircraft with Blue on blue attack, especially in Afghanistan and Iraq. But we're not, we're not blowing the aircraft for that, that's just human error. But um, a wonderful airplane and very, very, very strong and robust. Pilot sits in this tub of titanium armour. You've got this seven barrel GAU 8 Gatling gun, electrically powered Gatling gun, which fires uh, 30 mil, isn't it? 30 mil rounds, that's devastating. Um, and there's a famous story, there's actually doing the rounds at the moment, there's a video on YouTube from Ward Carroll, who of course is the, uh, the famous uh, advocate of the Tomcat, he was a wizard in the Tomcat, but he's been doing an interview with a lady called Kim Campbell, which is, uh, she was a pilot in 2003, second Gulf War, she got badly shot up over Baghdad, and the back of her aircraft was absolutely peppered with gunfire, chunks out of the horizontal stabilizers, uh, full of bullet holes and cannon shell holes and it was falling to pieces and she managed to get it back using she managed to use the manual controls um, not sure if it was hydraulic or because I haven't had a chance to actually listen to the whole podcast yet but recommend that to you and I'll try and put a link below so you can go and watch that anyway without further ado let's have a look at this updated kit which um, I think is for much for quite a lot of us have been waiting for this and I should just add as well, the thing about this, uh, we'll talk perhaps a bit more at the end, but it's very good value this kit, so we'll talk about that at the end. So I shall have to factor that into my, uh, my review scoring as well. So, A10C, I think you can probably, if you want to, also build the A, because I think it's essentially an A kit plus the C part. Let's have a look at what we have here then. 
I'll zoom you right on in. Now then, let's have a look. See, so you've got four schemes to choose from. And we've got a traditional grey, we've got a D-Day anniversary tribute, we've got a black one which looks very cool and stealthy, <coughs> and then we've got like this um, 1930s, like a tribute style uh, markings. Um, as you can see it is copyright 2022, made in China, copyright 2022, there we go, so it's the very latest kit. Spin it around and we're going to see that it is kit number 81796. And I will just, without further ado, oh, there's a bit more that we should see on the side, which I almost missed, and that's the weapon set. Now then, you can see here we have got GBU-8s. We've got Sidewinder AIM-9L which is basically the one, same as the ones that were, the lemurs were the ones used by the the British in the Gulf War, uh, very successfully. AGM-65s, uh, that's the Maverick isn't it? Maverick. And then you've got the uh, the Lantern Pod, Mark 82 bombs over here, we've got the Mark 20 bombs, ALQ-131 and the ALQ-119, these are various um, countermeasures pods. GBU-10 bombs, laser guided bombs and finally Sniper Pod which is the laser guidance system which is why this paper anything has been has been dropped and why it looks a bit sleeker at the front end. Anyway, without any further ado, I shall get cracking immediately for your interest and entertainment. And I did decide this time not to have it in the uh, the outer postal box because as any any of you that watched the Avro Anson review will know, it took me the best part of three minutes fighting to get in the the packaging. I couldn't get it out. <laughs> anyway. No wine and no alcohol today, with mineral water today. Should be fine, should be fine. Right then, what have we got? Looks like quite a lot of plastic, so got a nice leaflet here, um, giving you a little bit of background and it says here, A10 was the USAF's modernisation, uh, was the way that it was modernised under the Precision Engagement Programme, resulting in the A10C, which first flew at Eglin in 2005. The C adds Colour cockpit multifunctional displays, helmet mounted queuing system, hands on throttle and stick, or HOTAS as they call it, digital stores and management, improved fire control, GPS guided weapons, lightning stroke sniper pods, advanced data links, and integrated sensors. And it also debuted during combat in, the, in Iraq in 2007. And then you've actually got some of the items that are interesting updates are highlighted here. So you've got detailed cockpit and ejector seat, uh, these uh, antennas and communication systems that it mentioned, GPS systems, uh, detailed nose and landing gear here, general electric engine nacelles being well produced, dual vertical control and horizontal and dual vertical control surfaces are highly accurate. Uh, it looks I mean, these are CAD renderings, to be honest, but which I'm never a fan of. But it does look very, very good, doesn't it? Will the reality match it? On the back, we've got some other adverts, I think, of theirs. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, we've got a couple of tanks and things, and Soviet rocket module scuds. We won't get into those. So, <clears throat> let us crack in and see what we've got here. Now, it's just arrived. Fresh from the postman, so we've got fairly decent sized bags. So we'll get out the plastic. What have we got? Let's just see. Um, I'll just pop this quickly. Grab all the nice thing. There we go. We've got a sprue with all the fuselage, sprue with the top wings, sprue with the bottom wings, engines, etc., and cowlings. It looks like the weapons, I think. More weapons, more weapons and pods. Cockpit, tanks and wheels, clear parts, more clear parts, tyres, etc. And we get to the instructions, instructions, and the decals. Well, we start with those, so move it all over there, and we'll go in a reverse. So, okay, so we've got a colour call out sheet. Tell you what, I need to get a bit more organised here, don't I? Let's move those out. 
over here. Okay, now then. I've seen that already, so put that in there. So we're going to pull all that after we have a quick look at instructions, and I think we'll start with the decal. So I know I say this every time, and people people have been complaining, by the way, about my video saying you never do any building. I got somebody told me after the day and said, "What's happened to your channel? Why have you suddenly started doing this format where you're not building live anymore?" I replied by saying, "I never built live. I don't know what you're talking about. I think he has me confused with somebody else. Uh, I don't do live building. A because." I'm probably fairly rubbish, <laughs> rubbish, and B because it's I think it's boring anyway. I, don't know. I, I like to watch other people's build if they're doing something unusual or particularly interesting or showing you techniques, but just watching people build. Why well, you can just be building yourself, can't you? Really. Anyway, let's have a look at what we have here. Right now, then, as I mentioned, this kit is very good value. I'll come to the pricing at the end um, because. I think there's quite a lot of plastic here for the money, to be honest. And I haven't even seen the call telling yet, so let's just start by... Oh, this is... now this is good. I like this about Hobby Boss. They have this habit of... They tape the uh, decal sheet to the tissue, the protective tissue. So you don't... You know, a lot of kits like your Revels, you find the tissue somewhere else. It's not protecting it, it's not connected to it, is it? So I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll just very carefully try and very very carefully so that there was the decals let's have a look Ooh. <laughs> wow these are nice if my controls gone for the old video resume you in I think I've buried it under all this plastic here there we are. <laughs> right let's have a look now then, this is the D-Day, Just I think it's just purely for that one, the D-Day Anniversary um, Tribute Edition. Um, but you've got some really nice decals here. Um, don't think it's Cartograph, I think it's their own. But look at the instrumentation we've got there, that's nice isn't it? And you've got these like devils, Satan, and you've got obviously... D-Day Invasion Stripes, black and white bars. A bit glossy, I'm not sure whether you want to use those. Um, I'm not an expert on Hobby Boss's uh, decals. Uh, so I don't really know that well what they're like, actually, if I'm honest. Have I built any Hobby Boss before? I've got a feeling I have, I just can't remember. But I don't remember. Um, but whether you want to actually use those as decals or just, you know, mask it. You might be better off masking it and spraying it, I don't know, but they do look very nice on the face of it, so that's a good start. Then we have got the other set. Which is this one, this has got this tribute style to it, and it's got like a... Oh, I see, it's like a, a cobra, a snake. That's very interesting, look at this. How then? Can you see here we've got this like a snake's face here. Snakes on a plane, literally. See that? It's fangs. Wow. That's cool. Uh, and then you've got these um, sort of 1930s style American stars throwback scheme. And then you've got your more traditional uh, low vis type markings. Uh, and then you've got all these uh, stencils, quite a good range of them. Um, yeah, they carry a bit more carry film than we saw, for example, on the new Airfix decals, but not, not, not massively, so not a problem. Can you see that? Hmm. Uh. But no, they're very nice. They've got a nice finish to them. Fort Wayne, very nice. Looks good, in fairness. Get credit where it's due. They look pretty attractive, nice colours, quite striking. And then finally, oh, okay, this is for the, all the. Oh, this is just for the weapons, this, this whole decal sheet. Just for weapons. Look at that lot. So you've got a lantern pod, 
Uh, you've got the GBUs, ALQs, etc, etc. Wow, quite a lot there, in fairness. Quite a lot. So you're going to have some fun with stenciling on this one. But they all look very nice, and I think it's great that they've got the tissue. That is a positive thing. Now, put that in there. What have we got here? We have got... Black and white instructions. Now, if I remember rightly, their instructions weren't the best. Actually, they could be a little bit gobbledygooky, so we have to be a little bit careful with them. Now, we have here um, a sprue map. Um, doesn't really give you any hints about parts you are or are not going to use, which isn't actually very helpful because there's definitely going to be parts in here I think that you won't use. Anyway, I think it's a case of proceed with caution on these instructions. Um, but we've got this modern um, style, the C-style uh, uh, television uh, screen, what they call it, the TFT screens, um, which is not, not like it was on the original A version. Building up your, uh, your cockpit with your ejector seats. Seat, I should say. Simulator. Um, this is your, uh, here's your titanium uh, bathtub armour that goes around the the cockpit to save the pilot. Then you're building your GAU-8 cannon, electric cannon with its seven barrels. And this is the interesting thing, I think, in this kit because they've actually, I think they've provided um, two sets of the barrel and muzzle. Now, there's only one full cannon with its um, power system and uh, ammunition feeders, etc. So you can actually, I don't think it's got any uh, hatches or doors open. So what you can do is you can actually display this completely as a separate model outside the aircraft and still have your cannon sticking out. Now that's quite good, that's a little bit like Ravel do sometimes. quite like the idea of that. That's very good. And then we've got some fairly straightforward flaps and ailerons and slats here. Uh, and then very meaty looking wings of course. A characteristic relatively straight wing has a slight uh, dihedral of course for the outer part of the wing outboard and then underneath here you can see with my thumb is that they're actually putting them in aileron outer flap inner flap then you've got your tyres and I think we've actually got some rubber tyres which we'll have to look at those see what the quality is like so we've got tyres here and then we've got uh, this is your main gear sorry this is your your nose gear and then you, your main gears going together here um, so I'm sorry main, it is the main gear it says main tire again we have this slight problem with the language they use sometimes hobby boss are not the clearest as I said in their instructions uh, instead of saying at the top you know uh, landing gear main wing it says main tire which is a little bit confusing but anyway so it's your main, your main gear you're building up here, but they have got separate hubs. Now, as I say, these are supposed to be rubber, so you can paint your hubs separately. Um, they may look okay, in fairness. That's going into the, uh, the recessed sort of nacelle, which is basically purely there for the undercarriage, to be honest. And then you've got your weapons pylon going in here. Then you can repeat all the whole process we've just seen on the previous pages, so we'll skip over that. And again with the undercarriage on the opposite wing, same again. Um, then it's talking about starting to build up the, um, the main fuselage. Now I think we have to be a little bit careful because it's talking about make holes. We need to just double check the holes we're being asked to make are correct for the version we're going to do. Because, as you can see, I was right. In fact, I think Phil Flory did a review on this. I think he said something about this as well. You can see they've got this pave penny system here and they're clearly showing you having to drill a hole to fit it in. And that doesn't go in. If you're building the C version, which is what this kit's supposed to be, then you don't use that. So you've got to be a little bit careful here. Um, that it should be omitted. It should say only use if A version and it doesn't. So the instructions seem to have just been splurged out with the same sheets printed as on the old kit, so that's a bit confusing. Anyway, going, just going back a step, we'll just go back to, you can see here, two fuselage halves going together with your armoured tub for the cockpit for the pilot, then you've got your big GAU-8 cannon, uh, and your big muzzle going on the end there, and then you bring it all together. 
and then down here I'm building up all the nose gear, uh, nose wheel. And then over here we then do the tailplane. So we've got horizontal stabilizers, uh, and it's got the actual elevators sort of built in as one piece, which is a little bit of a shame, I think. But anyway, twin you've got your twin vertical tail, vertical stabilizers going in, then you've got your general electric motors, big engines, uh, turbo fans going in. Um, yeah, we'll have to have a look at what the plastic's like, because I do recall on the NAW version of the kit that there were some issues with the moulding on that, on the blades, but we'll look at that later. So you've got your, your engines going in and then you've got your big armour armor doors going on the outside, because they are very strongly armoured again. I think it's quite thin sheets of titanium again. And then you bring it all together basically, you've got your, um, your wings coming in and your tail planes coming on, which goes on from underneath, kind of like the real aircraft actually. And then, uh, you see, this is interesting, isn't it? It's not really showing the pave pen, you know, it's on the other side, isn't it? It's on, the pave pen's on the starboard side, you can't really see it. But just be wary, that shouldn't be there anyway. <laughs> so you've got your ladder coming out, your extending ladder. It's like a telescopic ladder, isn't it? Um, you've got your cover. Um, interestingly, of course, you'll have to put weight in this, which it doesn't seem to mention. But it's quite handy, they've got like a separate door here like a cover like a hatch because that means if you do forget like I always do you can always stick, stick some ball bearings or whatever lead in there near the end <laughs> by which time you'll already realize what you've done <laughs> it's a bit like I did with the Buccaneer 148th hopefully we don't repeat that disaster uh, not only was the kit a disaster but um, I've got to put the nose weight in and I've ended up some of you've seen this I've ended up with uh, big blobs of blue tack in the air intake engine intakes not ideal at all. So a uh, lesson learned, you know. I won't do that again. Anyway, uh, so yes, and then you're putting in your engines here, as you can see. And then you've got, uh, oh, you've got some chocks. That's quite cool. Chocks for the wheels. I like it. Hey, that's all right, isn't it? Um, so I wonder what the, uh, I wonder what this was for. Some rope along with the tyres. Come to that in a second. And then finally, you've got your uh, you've got your weapons. So you've got your AGM-65 Mavericks, and you've got your ALQ pod, uh, Sidewinder, AIM 9Ls missiles, there to air for defence. Mark 20 bomb, Mark 82, which is a is that that's not a laser guided bomb, is it? I don't think so. I think that's a free fall bomb, Mark 82. Uh, several of those, and then of course you've got your tank. I think it's just one of them. I think it's a centre line tank, ALQ one one nine pod, and the GBU ten laser guided bomb, uh, which for which the uh, sniper pod. Oh, yes, that's on the other page. You've got lantern pod and you've got sniper pod, all for you know laser guidance, etc. Um, and then it shows all the different stores options at the end, which is. To be honest, it's, um, yeah, that's quite cool, isn't it? I think that's quite good. It wasn't, it didn't seem as unclear as I was fearing. I seem to remember the last one was much more, a bit more muddled than that one. I quite like that. Okay, so, now then, what have we here? We've got our colour call out. So we've got the, uh, the sort of 1930s, uh, oldie worldy style, with this, uh, almost, it's almost like, Texan, they're not, they're not actually Texan, but just reminds me of the Texan Lone Star symbol. Um, and Mr. they're quoting Mr. Colour, which is okay, I suppose, does it? Oh, wait, oh no, hang on. Uh, I'm not being fair to our friends at Hobby Boss, they've actually done quite a good job here. Look at this. So they've actually given you the options of Mr. Hobby, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamiar, Humbrol. Of all those colours, it shows which one is which. That is really good. And on the other side, we've got this rather impressive black version. Doesn't tell you a lot about where it's based, which is a bit of a show. It's a little bit of detail are lacking, isn't it? A little bit of background, no. <laughs> no detail like that at all. Doesn't tell you where this one's based, but maybe somebody in, uh, in the chat or in the comments can shout out and tell us. Well, that looks very cool. That could be a nice option. 
That was clearly going to be used as a night attack aircraft. Well that is very good. And then over here we've got a bigger sheet. And significantly bigger in fact. Zoom it out. This is an A3 sheet. We've got the 100 years anniversary version which would also look pretty kicking I've got to say. With its invasion stripes on it does look rather sm splendid doesn't it? And it's also got your paint guide for that and for all the, the weapons and pods. It also shows the the stencil positions for each one. That's a nice sheet. I, I like the way they're doing this. I like it. And I like the way they're showing the, the different manufacturers colours at the bottom. And this is the more traditional one, the, the grey one, uh, which you're more familiar with as a scheme, I think. Right, so there we have it. Well, I have to say that the, um, again, talk about the price of this at the end, but so far it's pretty good. Pretty good. I haven't seen anything that I really thought, thought was a major problem or a dislike. So, clear parts, I'll start with clear parts this time if it's on the soft anyway. Nice little bubble pack, uh, bubble wrap bag. Um, I think I've got a mark on my canopy to be honest. Let's have a look, see if you can see this. There they are. They've got, they've got the rivet detail nice, haven't they? That's very impressive. That's really good. However, I seem to have got some rather strange marks on this. Can you see that? Some marks here. Is that on the outside or the inside? Is it in the actual glass? Looks like it's um, Kim Cowbell's plane after a, a rather messy strafing raid on Baghdad. That looks like a flaw in the actual plastic, oh dear. I think it might get marked down for this, that's a shame. Can you see that? That's come straight out of the bag, untouched by me. And we have like a fault in the glazing. Now, it may be on the surface, I think it's on the outside rather than the inside. Or is it actually in, is it actually in the plastic? itself, like a fluctuation in the plastic in the mould. See it? That is a bit of a shame because it's actually a nice bit of moulding and it's, uh, yeah, I suppose if I displayed it this side you wouldn't notice that, but uh, that's a bit of a, that's a bit of a negative. See it there, can't you? Very odd. I can't feel anything. It feels smooth. So strange. Hmm, bit of a shame. That, apart from that it's a really nice piece of, uh, of moulding so yeah, bit of a flaw on mine I'm afraid. Anyway, let's we'll discuss that at the end. Uh, then we've got a couple of just lights really, just various bits of tiny windows and lights uh, and obviously the, um, the windows on the front of the laser guided bomb stroke uh, and the, uh, the pods. I won't bother having those because there's not much point really. So, oh, I see, I missed one, there's another one. And it's the gun sight. Can we see that? That's part of the gun sight system in the, in the cockpit, I think. That looks okay. Yep, very nice. Okay. Now then. We've got some rubber tyres which, ooh, which look rather good I'm to open this. To open this. Hold on a second. Bear with me. This I need to see. Right, rubber tyre. Here we go. Now then. There's no seam line. Not, not that you can really make out. There's a mould mark on just there. Can you see it? Yeah, a bit of a mould mark. But apart from that, there's actually no seam line. That, I mean, you may, you may be seeing this on the camera, but I can tell you, even with my glasses at this range, you just cannot see it, so it's not obvious. That's really, actually, a very nice little rubber tyre, so I don't think I'd bother... I don't think I'd bother with uh, resin on this one, I've got to be honest. 
um, and then you've also got a small nose wheel these are very small nose wheel tyre again very very nice can't see any reason to upgrade that to be honest it looks absolutely fine so put those back don't worry too much about the cotton that's for the uh, for the chocks <laughs> right <coughs> zoom you out now so you can see what's going on what have we got here <coughs> Maybe I should go with the big ones first. Really. Let's do that. Let's do it in a logical order. So, big, big, big sprue here. Okay, so. Do you know, I think this is going to be a, a nice kit. Look at this. Now, bear in mind that I think some of these parts are not that new. Probably the sprue isn't actually that new. But look at, this. look at some of the detail we've got here. Isn't it nice? Brilliant recessed panel lines. Lots of riveting detail. See that? Right up to the tail there. Look at the detail, the rivet in there. Isn't that nice? You got your muzzle here for your GAU8 cannon. Again, beautiful detail on these vertical uh, tails, the vertical stabilizers with the rudders. There you go. Look at the uh, look at the riveting there. Isn't that nice? Ah, oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Other side of the um, other side of the fuselage, obviously, kind of really more of the same. Basically identical, apart from it hasn't got that panel open. Looks good though. Um, somebody tell me that they're very flashy sometimes, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. I've got the, uh, this is the tails where they're going, obviously, uh, the inboard side of the tails, vertical tails. That's very nice. And that's in its own bag as well, that sprue, which is a, a bit of a plus. Airfix, can you take note on that, please? <laughs> Second one, now we're on to wings. Let's have a look at this. Let's have a look. Okay. Aha! Uh -huh. And again, some very, very nice detail here. Look at this. Riveting. Not nice. Access hatches. Beautiful detail riveting. Panel lines good. Same on the other side. So I see this is the top wing. And uh, see cutouts there for your flaps and your elevator. And then you've got your flaps and your elevators here. Very nice. Then you've got your yeah the actual. There's a lot of flaps because they're in two parts, top and bottom. It's quite a lot of pieces of the flap system. And then you've got your the nacelle that's for the undercarriage there, one side, and then the other side here. Looks excellent, doesn't it? Can't really felt anything there. I can't see anything like sink marks or. 
ejector pin marks that are in the wrong places. All looks good. Now then. Not here. Oh, seems to have got stuck for some reason. Why are they stuck? There we go. Now then. So, here we've got some, well, some very interesting parts. We've got the underside, uh, you've got the, um, uh, the landing gear bay and the front nose gear bay, which of course is, because of the cannon, is off to one side. Very unusual. One of the strange things about this aircraft. So the cannon is on the port side and the landing gear is on the starboard side. And I, I guess it's all about balance really in centre of gravity. They've probably worked out how to get the balance right between the weight of the cannon and the weight of the gear. <laughs> and it seems to, uh, seems to work. Then you've got your, uh, your wheel um, hubs for the wheels. Yeah. Interestingly here we've got the ammunition belt. For the cannon, 30mm cannon, which is very nicely done, and then you've got uh, the fuel spare fuel tank, and here we've got the main gear or nose gear leg, and the extendable ladder, and then you've got various sort of small components dotting about, and over here we've got the instruments. looks quite nice doesn't it? I mean this is a nice kit I've got to be honest um, I haven't told you the price I'll keep that till the end and then you can tell me what you think of the value of it <coughs> because I thought it was a very good value and I did not hesitate to make my purchase because it seemed like yeah Seemed it was sort of uh, pretty good value and definitely something to invest in. Not something you have to think twice about. And you know, we're talking about 48 scale kit. It's quite big, it will be quite big. That's one concern for me actually. I haven't got much room. I'm not sure where I would actually put this at the moment. I'm going to have to get myself another cabinet. I really am. Didn't do a very good job of that, did I? Next time, just make one clean cut. Right, oh, now then. Okay. Yes, now it does suffer from this problem that we saw on the previous version, the twin seater, on the general electric turbofan, the blades, the impeller blade, here. It's the same problem actually. If you look carefully, I don't know if this will come out on the camera or not. If we look carefully, you can, yeah, you can see it there. You can see through. The blades and then on the other side you, you can't see through so there's a little bit of a an infill from the mould has occurred. If I turn it around just see how it looks on the other side. Yeah, here we go other side. Uh, can we see that? Yeah you can see there's daylight. You've got daylight on this one. Can you see daylight through it just about? Can you see that? Yeah. On this one no, just filled in a little bit, which is a little bit frustrating that they weren't able to just finesse their production process, perhaps a little bit more with those. Hmm. Yeah, they're not the same. You see there, there's a lovely, I mean, if they were both like that, that'd be great, but the other one isn't, it's kind of filled in. Uh, yes, a little bit of frustration, I think, there. Anyway, looking at the other parts, we have got all these General Electric, um, the actual jet engine here, two sides to it, and then you've got your cowling cover, armour plating for it there, and you've got some uh, more armour plating here, this is internal armour plating, uh, I think that's the intake end. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your, yeah this is the armour plate, uh, the underside of it. And again, there's some nice, nice detail there actually. Lots of lovely rivets. Can you see that? Yeah. 
done that quite well. Yeah, the only thing that lets it down really is that. Oh, yeah, you've got your gun barrels here as well. There's your GAU 8 gun barrel. And there's, uh, there's two of those in total. Yes, well, slight disappointment. I think might lose a point for that for those engines being sort of a little bit flashed up, if that's the right word. If you know what I mean. Then we have got dum 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 the weapon. Oh no tell you what, let's do the let's do the wing. Let's do the wing. We'll get the big one out of the way. Look at this. We have got Quite a large sprue here. You just cut the way through. Yeah, to be cleaning this time for once. Now then. Okay. And they're very protective over these this end, aren't they, for some reason? I think you remember this in the other in the other kit, the earlier version, twin. Yes. They're just protecting what they obviously think are a bit sensitive, not quite sure why really. I don't think Airfix would be so fussy, would they? <laughs> so you've got your tail plane here, your vertical, uh, horizontal stabiliser, I should say. And this is the underside of it, with the elevators there, at the top as you look at it. And then again, we've got over here the underside of the wing. And you can see all your pylon points, your weapons and targeting pods there. And here are the said pylons which are two side moulded in one piece. That's nice. Very, very cool. Hmm. That's what I mean, that's what makes the Warthog what it is. It's like I said, it's a flying tank, isn't it, really? And then at the other end, you've got the, uh, again, the horizontal stabiliser, and this is the top. I'm saying that is it the top? Yeah, it is. It's the top because it, the, this this is the bit that goes underneath. And it slots up into the actual fuselage at the back. But it's very nice. There's lots of detail, lots of rivets and little like, on these pylons. There's all sorts of subtle little paddling and riveting and very nicely done actually. So yeah, another nice sprue in fairness. I mean, as you're going to find out when I talk about it in more detail on pricing and value at the end, this kit is only really Airfix money. Um, and there's a lot of plastic here for the, for the cash, to be honest. So it's really a, you know, quite a good return on your investment, so to speak. Although we, we talked about this last week with my stashes video. I'm not sure that there's any such thing as a return on investment, really. Oops, didn't sound too good. Done. There we go. Not sure why they felt the need to just protect those parts the way they did. But never complain about adding protection. It's always a good thing. That one over there. And then we're down to last two, three bags, four bags. So this, this one strangely is a much tighter package, this bag, so I'm going to have to be a bit careful. This is the cockpit tub, and again, we've got some additional protection. Um, cockpit tub looks quite good. Look at that. Here we go. Now then. See that? And then we've got the, uh, is the gear door, is that the underside? I think that's the inside of the gear bay here. And then we've got this bit that's being protected very carefully because it is the ejector seat. Oh, they've moulded that very well, actually. Look at that. How's that? That's been well done, hasn't it? Almost resin quality, that is. Yeah, it's like a slide moulding, isn't it, the way they've done it? Oh yes. Yes, I'm impressed with that. That's a nice little ejector seat. That's one of the nicest ones I've seen in a standard injection moulded plastic kit, really. How interesting. Well, I'm not sure it needs that frip around it in terms of the foam. Unless it's going to go into trans transit. Which it isn't. Put that over there. And then we have got... 
Now then, what over here looks like weapons to me. Yes, indeed it is. Weapons. All sorts of weaponry. We might have two identical sprues. Yes, we have. So, this is definitely worth a close look. So this is one of the additional sprues they've included. With your Maverick missiles. And your ALQ pods here. A very nice looking, in fairness, Sidewinder 9 Lima. And is that the Lantern Park? I think it is. And then, yeah, we have a complete duplication. See the same there. Very nice. Nothing wrong with those at all. Nice and sharp. Yeah, meaty. Okay. Another one, this has got that, oh, this is the sniper pod. I think it's just sniper and lightning, I think those are the ALQs, aren't they? Oh, forgive me, I'm not an expert on these uh, targeting and countermeasures pods, to be honest. Right, wow, look at that. Oh yes, and here's your little uh, the sort of camera and ball reflector on a gimbal at the front. See that? That's nice, isn't it? Ooh, cool. Oh yes, oh, yes indeed, that's very very good. Again, lovely riveting and detail. All the little facets have got an alternate. Uh, I think this, yeah, that's the, see, the, this is the later cockpit, the TFT system, multiple display screen. I think this is the later C version that's in my hand. I think this whole sprue that I've got here is the C sprue. That's for the later variant. So the other instrumentation we saw before, that would be for the standard A version. And then last but not least, we have this great big, I think this is going to be bombs. I think so. It looks like it is. Okay. Now then, again, very overprotected, aren't they? <laughs> They're really trying to keep everything nice. Yes, it's bombs for sure. And there's two sprues the same. Ah, a little tiny bit of flash now creeping in here. I've just noticed. See if you can spot it. See that? Here and here. A bit flashy. Not bad though. Not bad at all. And then you've got your. Uh, GBUs, I'm going to lose track of which one is which now. This is the big GBU. GBU 8, huge thing. It's massive, it's like a cruise missile almost, isn't it? Very, very big. Yes. A real beast. And then these are the Mark 20s. I think, yes, they are. Mark 20s. Obviously, over here we've got the the traditional uh, GBU tens, I say traditional, <laughs> sort of late, sort of let's say 21st century laser guided bomb, and and then you've just got your dumb bombs here, these conventional bombs, uh, which of course is the Mark 82s. They're very nice. I mean, so there's, a couple, there's a couple of those Mark XTs that are flashy, but the rest isn't. It's not the flash is not typical at all. It's all you know, just just there. You can see that flashiness, can't you? Just a little bit evident. But on the other parts, no, on the other bombs, it's fine. Well, interesting. Um, I have to say that overall, I am very very impressed. Um, now, now we talk about the pricing. Huh. So I, I actually just bought this, it's just arrived today, and it cost me, including postage, I paid 32, under £32.50, which I thought was cheap, you know. I think for something, especially with the amount of plastic we've got here. So when I give it a rating at the end, I think we've got to fact, it's got to be factored in really. That's not a lot of money, is it? Especially at the moment when things are going up and kits are going through the roof, frankly. 
Um, it seems spectacular value that. And it's a damn nice kit, a damn nice kit. It, it, it just makes you want to build it, you know, you can have yourself a real nice warthog from this kit. Uh, I'm told that you need to test fit one or two parts, but overall I think it goes together very well. So they tell me, so they tell me. So, where are we at? So, what, 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 what didn't I like, okay? Um, I thought the decals and the instructions all looked really decent to be honest, I thought they were great. What did let it down though, from, on my copy, was that canopy, which wasn't very nice, was it? I might even have to, I maybe have to contact Hobby Boss and try and get another one. That's not easy, is it? Um, and of course, the other thing was the flashy, a little bit of flash on the bond. Not, not significant that, but yes, it was on those those engine uh, engine blades, the fan blades. That's a little bit disappointing that that that's filled in once. Clearly, you know, you can see through the blade, and then when you can't, that's a little bit disappointing. So I think, I think it's a nine out of ten, but I'm tempted to say nine and a half. Only, and that's kind of, I'm conflicted because that, that canopy is is bad. But I'm sure that's just, uh, I'm sure if we go look at other reviews, you'll probably find out it's a one up. I've just been unlucky this time, and I've been very lucky with most of my kicks to be honest, to not have things like that. So I think it's a, it's a kind of a 9 out of 10, but I'm tempted to say 9.5 because of the price. It's £32.49p, delivered to my door. I mean, that's nothing now, you know, that's nothing. That's 20, that's sort of 70 second scale kit prices now, £32 for a lot of kits. And that, you've got all those weapons, you've got two guns so you can display one out, you've got little chocks for the wheels and... It's a nice kit, it's a nice kit. Yeah, there's one or two little glitches, but they're very minor. And at the end of the day, you know, the engines, who's going to really notice that, really? I think I'm going to say, slightly slightly controversial, say nine and a half. You could argue it's a nine, um, because I've got that nasty canopy. But without that, it's a nine and a half. I think that's fair, isn't it? And if you buy one, the chances are you're not going to have that canopy glitch on, on yours. So there you go, nine and a half out of ten. Hope you thought the review was interesting. You give me 10 out of 10 with a thumbs up, smashing that like button. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If you are a regular subscriber, please be sure to ding the notification bell to get the latest news of up and coming videos that you might enjoy. Anyway, thanks very much for joining me. I uh, hope you enjoyed the show and hope to see you all again in the not too distant future. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And bye for now.